So in celebration of 2022, this new year, new film cinematic year, we're going to talk about some films that we're really looking forward to. We already went through 5, 4, 3. Now we're on to our top two that we are most excited about. And then we'll potentially pop in some other shout outs and yes and movies that we're interested in because we actually have more than five each we each have a bunch that we're looking forward to okay so another film that i am really excited about and i'm so i'm not embarrassed i'm very proud that i am such a big fan of this franchise but it's just that it is a franchise and it's just like, oh my gosh, what, what, is, what is going on? But when I read through the list of 2022 films, I, my heart screamed. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> I know what it's going to be. Do you though? I don't know if you do. I think so. Okay. So Mission Impossible 7 is coming out. Oh, you so you do. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> And I love that franchise. I I have no idea why. It's like an irrational love for the franchise. And and I know that there are lots of things that are wrong with it. And the fact (laughs) that like it's so completely not believable in terms of how it all plays out, what Tom Cruise can do, all of those different things, and that it keeps going on and on. I just love, love this franchise. So I'm very excited for Mission Impossible the seventh. <laughs> yeah, I right before you said I was like, oh, I've got it. We talk about Mission Impossible a lot on this podcast. It's not on my list, but like I will probably end up seeing it in theaters. We'll see. Nice. And then maybe if if we're in the same place we can go see it together. <laughs> oh, that would be so nice. Cheryl and that I haven't seen really each other cute. in person since pre COVID, so it's been a while. Yeah. Okay. How about you? I'm really going back and forth between a couple, but I'm glad we get to mention them at the end because there's others that I'm really looking forward to as well. But this next one is called Luckiest Girl Alive. And it's only on my Mm. radar because I read the book. It's just like she said. Uh, I think 2018, and this was the best book that I had read all year. I read it in like the December holidays, like very end of December and it was automatically like the best book I'd read that year. I don't even know how to describe it except for it's about this girl who like on the surface seems like she's extremely lucky, uh, very privileged, has had a ton of opportunities, but you sort of look back at her life and see how everything is very, very constructed and it's not at all what you think. This film was actually filming like very, very close by to me here in Toronto a little while ago. Actually, the gym I go to had like a sign up that was like, this film is filming here. And I was like, oh my God, because I knew that they were making it into a film, but I didn't really know the timeline. Anyways, I am really hoping that they do this well. They have cast Mila Kunis as the main character who I don't love and she's not really what I was picturing, but I think with the right hand, they could do really, really well with this film because it has a lot of like very important messages. It is actually like, pretty dark but I just love the book and I'm hoping that the movie lives up to it yeah I saw that and I didn't read the book so I I have no idea what it is so I saw Mila Kunis I I like her I personally don't mind her I was just yeah I'll probably watch it because of her so maybe it's the opposite (laughs) reason yeah the opposite reason of why of of Lara's um small point at the end Okay. Drum roll again. Top pick. <laughs> Top pick. It's Babylon. It's which what? is Babylon? This is not on my radar. Wait, did I get it? I must have gotten it right. It's the Damien Chazelle one. Oh. I did see yeah. that on the list. Yeah. So Damien Chazelle, new film by him, and also it is with Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie, and just very, very excited. I mean, great cast, and also great director. And it's about kind of the move from silent film to talkie. So I think that it's really nice to watch a film about kind of like historical things, just to learn about them. Not saying that I'm a massive fan of historical type of 
movies or historical genre, but I really, yeah, I'm really excited about the director and cast. Mm-hmm. I was surprised. So I that... assume we didn't have that as an overlap. No. <laughs> I thought we might. No, I, I was surprised that he was attached to this project. Although I guess Jamie, Damien Chazelle has kind of gone all over the place with the kind of projects he does. Like there's not really any like one genre that he sticks to. So that's pretty neat. Um, but I don't know, this could kind of go either way for me. I, I feel like I might, might be interested in it. I might not. We will have to wait till the trailer to find out. My and your film. top pick. So actually, Ooh. I chose this one because it is a director that I am very interested in, similarly to Damien Chazelle, um, but not the same director. So this is Jordan Peele's next film. Nope. I may have... That's on my list too, but really? like <laughs> lower down. Right. Okay, so we have some overlap. Um, yeah. I, maybe we mentioned this on the podcast before, but like when the poster released, it was so funny because it's it's kind of a weird poster. Like it literally just says nope on it. I, I thought it was it was very well done, just the way that they decided to release it. And even the fact that like the title is kind of a joke, but kind of like an in kind of term. Um, no idea what it's about. I don't even remember if, if they released that information, but I've been really impressed by both Get Out and Us. So I think he could only do great things from here on out. Yeah. So that's on my like lower down part of the list, but I am also really excited about it. Um, Another film that I'm excited about, which is not the top five, is Disappointment Boulevard. Yes! That was the one I wasn't sure. So we do have crossover. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. And I think it's. Yeah, well, this surprised me because I thought that you didn't like horror at all. Well, as you can tell, it is lower down on the list, and so that's probably why. <laughs> it's because I'm not massively into horror. I I watch it because I think that it's it can be a very clever genre, mm-hmm. and I think Nope, Disappointment Boulevard, both of those will probably be very clever renditions of the horror genre. So I, I'm excited because both great directors, and I just, yeah, I, I can't put it top five because... I'm intrigued, but potentially more, like, a bit wary already just because, like, oh, what if it's terrifying? But still, (laughs) that's kind of part of the thrill, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is another one I don't think had any kind of synopsis. It was just, like, oh, new horror comedy from this director. And I was like, well, I've liked the last two, so I'm probably going to like this one. And I agree. I think that through horror, you're, like, sometimes it's easier to make social commentary or... Um, delve into issues that you wouldn't be able to in other genres. So I think that'll be great. Any other ones that you're most excited about? Yes. So the only other one that I have on this list is called Cyrano. I think that's how you say it. Um, Based on Cyrano de Bergiac. Bergiac. I've never read the original material. But it's directed by Joe Wright, who did Pride and Prejudice, uh, Anna Karenina, Atonement, Uh, Also Darkest Hour, but I didn't like that one as much. So he has done some amazing, like, kind of period piece work. He's not working with Keira Knightley this time, but with um, Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones and many other films. And, um, oh my god, I can't, I can never remember his name, but he's one of my favorite actors. He was in Waves, he was in Monsters and Men. You know who I'm talking about? I do know who you're talking about. Kelvin Harrison Jr. There we go. Yes. Yes. so he's one of my favorite actors, and he's in it. I've never seen him in a period piece before. So I think that this film, it has a lot of elements that I'm really interested in. And it comes out early January, I think. So pretty soon. Nice. And how about you? I think that's it. That's really all. I mean, I can say, like, another <laughs> franchise. I am kind of excited about Top Gun, Right, but I thought I'm that just, was going to be on your list. I'm more, like, intrigued. I'm not... But I think you can tell that I am a really big fan of action genre, and I guess... I think Mission Impossible is enough Tom Cruise for, for my list. Like, I don't need another... <laughs> One film a year. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. Like, I'll probably watch it. But it's more like, I think I was excited last year about Top Gun, mm. and then the fact that it's been in the conversation for so long like maybe that's why I'm just not as excited about it anymore 
I I am kind of like interested in the fact that we're both not really excited about the Batman because <laughs> I know so many people who are. Okay, but to but... me, like the trailer didn't look amazing. To be honest, yeah. I thought the trailer was like only okay. Considering the fact that we kind of uh, trash talked the one Batman movie that we did watch on this podcast, which was we the didn't Dark trash Knight. talk it. Well, though. I don't think we had overall super positive feelings about it. Um, it, which is widely considered, like, the best, if not one of the best Batman adaptations of all time. I don't think that movie is for us. Yeah, but do you not like Robert Pattinson? I, I like Robert Pattinson. I like him in certain films. I think the obsession around him is a bit much. Um, mm. and I think... Yeah, like, his cult of personality is a bit much for me. I think he's a little bit almost, like, too self-aware. And I don't think that this is the role for him. I don't. Well, you heard it here first. (laughs) 